We have about 65 million police encounters in the United States every year, okay? Uh, 10 million arrests, 65 million police encounters. So when, you know, you have a bad experience with a cop, you have a bad experience, I do, you have a bad experience. There's 65 million encounters. There's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong. 65 million, you all. This isn't like, you know, I've been in a cop car with a cop and we drive down the street and somebody waves to the cop and then he sort of waves it. That's not an encounter. An encounter is an engagement with someone. 65 million of them in the United States. So you're going to have some that go wrong. You just will. That's the nature of it, right? And you want to minimize that. You want everyone to go right, but some are going to go wrong. There's a lot of attacks on law enforcement, right? I mean, really, it's pretty... Uh, and, you know, a lot of these, the 60,000 officers, 90,000 officers, right? So 60,000 assaults. Um, they're, not, they're not all assaults, you know what I mean? Like, if I, if I put my hand... If I'm like those cops that I was arguing with who were ticketing my, my neighbor, if I had, when he was poking me, if I would have just pushed his hand away that would have been assault on a police officer. I'm like, come on, man. Stop with this nonsense, right? So some of that is not really assault. And in all fairness, it isn't. But, but you know, um, 30% of the officers assaulted were considered injured, and police officers don't come home to their families. But, you know, 46, I mean, I'm not, not to make light of it, but people, we talk about how it's, it's such a dangerous, dangerous job, but... 46 out of 900,000 people, in fairness. So I, I get, like, nothing, I, I'm, again, this is me being fair. It is more dangerous to be a roofer in the United States than to be a police officer, right? But nobody talks about roofing as a dangerous job. At the same time, nobody who's on a roof uh, falls off the roof and dies because someone pushes them off the room. They're not feloniously assaulted right? And that, unlike police, because this isn't all the police that die. Most police who die, they, 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 in the United States, die from, because they died on the job of a heart attack or something like that, or a, or a, or a traffic accident or something, right? These are felonious assaults. These are when somebody de deliberately killed them. So, but, but this is, you know, police want to come home, right? Your father, every night, he wants to come home to you and your, and your, your, your mom. Do you have siblings? I have seven siblings. Dude, okay. So look, think about the tragedy of that, right? Think about the tragedy of something happening to her father with eight children. Like that is just, you know, come on, man. And you want to, when you and the two of you become police, you want to go home, right? I mean, clearly. This is a video we used to use in class. And this guy, he's a, a police activist, a community activist, really checking the police. And the police took him on a training course to like, what would you do in this situation? They gave him a gun and they, they said, here's the training we go through and, and you gotta split, you know, you're gonna have a split second to make decision. You're gonna, you're gonna question some guy and then you're gonna, the, the, the person's gonna react in a certain way. You got a split second to make your decision about that person. And like, you're gonna see how well you do that because when things go south, they go south really fast. And this guy, so he's, a, he's African-American. Um, he left the training completely discombobulated and he talks about it in the video we used i used to use it in this class like i like i had I, it's just like him stepping into somebody else's shoes in a way that just blew his mind and radically transformed his way of thinking just like people if you go to the next slide people who say oh the police don't act unviolently or unethically very often well that's because you're not in the right neighborhoods Maybe not in your neighborhood. Maybe not where you live. Right? Maybe it's fine where you are. Maybe you're not driving around with the right friends. Right? Why don't you drive around with a couple dark-skinned young men and find out, you say, I never get pulled over by the police. Really? Okay, well, here you go. Um, go with one of your, couple of your dark-skinned friends, if you have any. If not, make some. Drive around with them and see how often you get pulled over by the police. See how the police treat you in the car when they're the ones driving versus how they treat you in the car when Gianna or Jesse are the ones driving. Like, do that. And when you do that, 
then you can have a, come back and have a conversation about how often this stuff occurs. Okay, so let me walk you, I'm going to walk you through some data here, all right? Um, because one of the things that this activist, the activism on police is about death, police killing black and brown people. And I want to show you some data on this and, and what it is. So first off, uh, lifetime risk of being killed by the police for African people, uh, African American men, that's this, women is is red. Um, it's, it's close to 100 per 100,000 people. Being killed by the police doesn't say whether you're armed or unarmed, doesn't. Um, for white people, it's about 40 per 100,000 people, okay? So like, that's a huge difference. Um, here we got American Indians, L Latinos, um, Asian, that, that's a big difference. And so when black people are talking about the need to reform policing, Black people are looking at those kinds of numbers and saying, that's just unfair. And so they would go to somebody like your father and say, what, Expl why, explain that, like, explain that. What is that, right? Or they would go to the two of you when you're police and say, like, w explain that. Like, that, that shouldn't happen, okay? And let me show you, uh, uh, okay, next slide. So how many people have been killed by the police? since 2015? Um, I'm going to say... You're not I'm, even going to be close. So. Yeah, I feel like I'm not going to be close, but I'm going to say somewhere around 5,000. Okay, 5,000. Yep, Jesse. Um, I'd say somewhere near that, in the thousands. Okay. I would say maybe like 3,500, 4,000. 3,500 or 4,000? Okay. Um, so 6,600, okay? 6,600, which is, you know, is, it's a lot and it's not very many at the same time. Every death is a tragedy, okay? So now, what percentage, what number, how many of those people were white? No, how many of those people were black? I was going to say like 45. 100? Like 45%. 45%, okay. Um, I'm going to say like 60. 60%? Yeah. I'm going to say even 50%. Okay. Yep. Okay, so go to the next slide. So 23% um, were black, 44% white. These are, these are the numbers in the population right here. 60% of the U.S. during these years are white, 12.2% black, 18% Hispanic, and so on. Right? So these, these are the numbers, right? Mostly, you know, we, we only talk about black people being killed mostly because it's black people are the ones that have been really speaking up. You know, the, this, this idea I had about paramilitary policing, you know, I've been talking about this for 35 years. Black people around me have been talking about this for 150 years. It's a conversation in the black community and the paramilitary policing. White people don't even see it. White people are just like, I don't, yeah, I don't really, I don't, poor white people talk about it, but white people in the middle class and upper middle class and so on, they don't really see it. So there's a way in which the black community in the United States had been like, there's an old saying about canaries in the coal mine, because they would put canaries and they'd take canaries down in the coal mines. And if the canaries, if there was any um, uh, carbon monoxide, then they would, the canary would die. And so you would, then you would know that, right? So black people have been raising the alarm for some of this, like your mom. And, and other people aren't really talking about it, but okay, okay, but look, but we're not talking about white people being killed by the police. So we're not just mostly because white people aren't thinking about it. Black people talk about white people being killed by the police. Black people, by the way, just so you know this, because you're probably not, most of you are probably not paying attention but I pay attention when I listen to Black Lives Matter activists. They're, they're all, they're, you know, they'll talk about black people, but they're always talking about white people, Latino people, and Asian and Native American people also being, you know, hurt by the police. But white people often have this idea that, oh, black people only talk about black people. It's just not true. How many of the people who were killed by the police are unarmed? 66, 6,632. How many were unarmed? 
around 120, 150. 120, 150. Yeah, you yeah. said unarmed, right? Unarmed, yeah. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Jesse, what about you? 300. Yep. You said two. What do you say? I was going to say like six, somewhere between six to 800. So, so six to 800. So you said 100. That seems really low. So how, why, where do you, how do you come to that? Well, you know, if you asked me that question before class, I probably would have said something higher, but like looking at it and seeing the actual numbers, 6,632 people total since 2015. And majority of that is white people. Yeah. So it kind of, that, that changed my perception on what my number, what the numbers in my head might have already, what I already had. So, so what, now what, I'm thinking what, maybe but, around that. Okay, but let me ask you a question, right? I'll ask the two of you. So in the conversation that we have, that Black Lives Matter movement has brought to the public attention, which is really important. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a movement that bring our attention to these issues, right? But if we're talking about over the course of five years, six years, we're talking about, he's saying he estimated 100 unarmed people were killed by the police. That, how do we have a whole movement about 100 people you, you know what I mean? Do, do you just want to, do you have anything to say about that? Like, because what that means is everyone who's not armed, unarmed, is armed. Everyone who's armed then could kill your father in a moment, could kill when the two of you, if you become police, because your traffic records are so terrible, right? But you may not be. But if you do, that means that like, people have weapons, and you know, you know what I mean? So we hear about police killings, but, the, but what you're saying is, yeah, but 100 of them are armed, but 6,500 are, are not. And that means they're, out, they're, they're potentially going to kill somebody. So what are we talking about here? So do you have any thoughts about like the implications of the, just like, if so many people are armed and unarmed, why are we, why are we having this conversation? Like, what is it? Do you have, do you, and do any questions come up? Um. Well, I know, I don't know if it's, I'm just saying, um, police are only to draw their gun if there's another weapon that they see. Um, but I mean, unarmed, it could be someone who's high on drugs or wrongful pullover who they think has a weapon, but they don't. Um, traffic, like rec real reckless driving. Yeah. But, I mean. Yeah, but the, but the question is, we're, we're having this, really in some ways one of the most fractious movements in the United States about policing and people really putting this out on the table and, and what we're talking about is that police are murderers right police are killing communities police are violent killers police are all the negative stuff to police and if police this, this is, there's, there's a lot going on here that's like, wait, hang on a second. Like, who, who what are we talking about? And, it, and if we don't expand the conversation into these areas, then we're really missing what needs to be discussed. Okay? So, with my original low number of unarmed, what I meant by that was like, society, I feel like, People being, that amount of people being armed in a way of, if you're a police officer coming yeah. into my house, right? What if I'm cutting a sandwich and I have a knife in my hands, but yeah, you're yeah, a brand yeah. new rookie cop, yeah, you get scared. Yeah. That I wasn't threatening you or anything, but yeah. in the report, it's going to say I was armed with a knife and you felt threatened. Yep. Yeah. So there's things like that. Some and things I'm, like, there are some exact, stories yeah, like Not that, a lot, but, but. Most of the 66, 32 are, are yeah. not that. I'm also saying that small number is how you were like kind of saying, why is there a whole movement about this? Why is, why is it such a big focus? I think it's because when you see the numbers and you see this many people had guns, this many people yep. had a weapon, anything that was some yep. kind of threat, yep. everybody kind of understands. Yep. You, they don't really need the context. They get there was something, yeah, like something threatening them. Yep. And then unarmed, oh, 422. Still, that, but still, that's 422 people 
dude, that weren't threatening every, or may have been every threatening, life, but with no weapon. Look, uh, no one of the consistent of things harm. that I, yep. Look, everyone is a tragedy. First off, everyone is a tragedy, right? Yeah. And, 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 and everyone who is not armed is absolutely a tragedy. Uh, and, yeah. And I, and I've had many conversations with, uh, with many different kinds of police. Hey, wait, hang on one second. We still have, how much time do we have? We have four minutes? Yeah, we have four minutes. Okay, but everyone's a tragedy, right? Yeah, the, no, of course. No life, it's just, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. we, we would expect to see, we have so many guns in our society, mm -hmm. people killing each other, people being stupid, people who have guns who shouldn't have guns. Like, how do you, yeah, it's just, uh, disturbing yeah. at multiple levels okay but i think it's that separation in society where if anybody in this room heard of one person getting shot by a police officer and they had a gun yeah. everybody's gonna be like okay maybe the cop felt threatened but the second i say he dropped the gun and he didn't have any more i guarantee everybody in this room would say that's why why'd he shoot him then yeah yeah exactly. questioning that exactly so yep can you go to the next slide so here the un, for the unarmed people, um, these were, these are the numbers. And, you know, it, it, and, and I think um, if we don't take this, this, this is really, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a very, I'm going to speak right into green for a second. It's a really troubling issue for me because we need to have this conversation about guns and weapons in policing and inequality and if we don't find a way to do it and bring everybody in but what we've done is we've created this as a situation where it's just black people who are being who are raising issues that it seems like other people aren't raising and in fact this is a, a disturbing issue for everybody but unless everybody really figures a way to get onto it and talk about it in some way, then like, I don't know, like we're not gonna move anywhere. But by the way, this right here today, this is critical race theory. So when you hear about, oh, you know, like the, we're teaching critical race theory to our kids, this is critical race theory. This is an attempt to look at race and policing and all sorts of things and to try to have some way of comprehending and understanding, okay?